Hello, hello there. There is Augie again, and I'm um, coming to you from Broadcast Gmail on 44 different platforms around the world. And one of them is the Conscious Awakening Network. You gotta go visit those once, at least once. So you can see and look at the 50 different shows that they have over there. All the interesting stuff that both you and me need to know. That is consciousawakeningnetwork.org. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about an incident that I had some 46 years ago. I, uh, some of you out there know that in my younger days, I uh, was a pilot. I was a flight instructor and... Uh, I uh, flew air taxi and I was a line pilot with an accident prevention counselor for the FAA and I ran part of the, uh, the flight school that we had and uh, as well as the air taxi. So, you know, there were busy days back then. And I had left the Anoka County Airport where we had the uh, flight operation and uh, flew my wife down to Nebraska, my wife at the time, to see her mother. And on the way back, I was sitting up there at 9,500 feet, just kind of relaxing, going home. I was on top of the clouds. And suddenly, there was a phenomenal vibration in the engine. It was so severe, I knew that thing was going to quit. And in a matter of a few seconds, it did quit. So there I sat at 9,500 feet, doing about 60, 60, 70 miles an hour in a Mooney. And uh, the first thing that happens when a pilot in a single engine airplane loses an engine, it increases the pucker factor about four to 500 times. I guess you have to be a pilot to know that joke. But the thing about it is when an engine quit, the instinct of the pilot kicks in that is drilled into him in training. So in the next two seconds, we have things to do. It all depends on your altitude. I was up at 9,500 feet, so I had a little bit of latitude about when things had to be done. But if you are really low to the ground. Let's say you're taken off two, 300 feet in the air and the engine quit in a single engine airplane. Your hands got to be all over that cockpit in the next two seconds. Fly the airplane, secure the airplane and try to start the engine. Because two seconds may be all you have. Though I did have a little more time in my case. Now that vibration was so severe, I was afraid that the engine would actually fall out. And um, it vibrated for about maybe five seconds or so, and then it froze. The propeller stopped, and I pulled back the... Uh, the, uh, there was a variable speed propeller, so I pulled back and I was able to turn the propeller so it was this way instead of flat against the air. That made a big difference in the drag that was created by the airplane. And, uh, of course, I thought, okay, is this it? I was on top of the cloud layer. I couldn't see a thing. All I saw was white. And I have been a little relaxed. I wasn't quite sure how far away I was from the next um, VOR or very high, you know, the navigation station. And uh, it was ahead a little bit. So I called the flight service station at, at uh, Redwood Falls in Minnesota. I told them my situation. I said, I'm up here at now 
going down below 9,000 feet, and my engine quit. I think I am within range of landing at the airport at Redwood Falls. So they gave me weather and uh, direction, and I turned into the, um, the VOR, the Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range Navigation Beacon, and I headed straight for the airport. And I went down, but remember that cloud layer? I went into the clouds. I saw nothing. Then I was just on the instruments. That's all I could see. But I broke out of the clouds. And right there, Redwood Falls was right in front of me. With the airport right on the other side. Right beyond range. I knew I couldn't make it to the airport. So what else is there to do? Well, I peeled off to the left and I started scanning the countryside for a suitable place to land. And uh, I found, identified, uh, what looked to me like an alpha alpha field because it was pretty clean, no rows or furrows or anything. And uh, I headed for that. I was a little high, so I had to circle about a half a time or maybe something like that. And I came in, put the landing gear down, and landed right in that field. Now, it sounded pretty simple, didn't it? No, it wasn't. There's a lot of things that go through your mind when you know you're going to land. You have one shot at it. And uh, I remember that when I was in the clouds. Because when the engine quit, not all the instruments were working anymore. So I had needle, ball, and airspeed. That's a term that uh, you know, pilots will know about. And I made it down, so things were okay. I landed in the Alpha Alpha field. It was very smooth. And, uh, of course, nobody saw me. So I got out of the airplane, walked over to the farmer, and I told him, you know, I landed in your field because the engine quit, so could I borrow your phone? And he invited me in, and this day cooked up coffee and then had cakes and I called I called back to the office at the airport, told them what happened. And uh, then I called home and then I called flight service and officially canceled my flight plan. And uh, well, it was pretty simple from there on. So uh, my partner that uh, in the flight operation, him and the mechanic, they headed on down and uh, took about, oh, I don't know, less than an hour to get down there. So uh, I was sitting in with a farmer and uh, I walked outside of the airplane. They said, I told them exactly where I was sitting in relation to the airport. So uh, they found it and they landed in the field and came up to my airplane that was dead sitting there. And uh, they took the cowlings off and looked, and uh, it looked, uh, didn't see much on the outside, I remember, but uh, we uh, flew back, and then the, I think the next day or so, they flew a bigger airplane with a little bigger um, cargo, and uh, they flew down, uh, two mechanics went down, and then they took the engine out of the Mooney, and put it in the back seat of that other airplane and got off and just came on home. And uh, we had a big me mechanics shop, maintenance shop in our hangar. So we rebuilt the engine at home. So, so it, was, uh, it was okay. I think it took us about well over a month, maybe two months to get all the parts together because it appeared, I seem to remember there was something about the front bearing of the crankshaft had let loose and uh, then the crankshaft was wobbling and everything came apart. So 
I think that's what it was, I seem to remember. But when I think back on this incident, it is uh, interesting to think of, because I had one engine and it quit. I had another failure of an engine, but then I was in a multi-engine airplane that was in a Cessna 310. And, uh, you know, when one engine quit then, you know, the other one is still running, so you can continue. Uh, most likely it would be wise to get on the ground as soon as possible. But uh, you have a little more latitude of where to go and what to do. But in a single engine airplane, that's that one. That's all you have. So I remember after this incident, I slacked off a little bit on the uh, on the instruction because that most of that was in single engine airplanes, except for the multi engine students that we were we were teaching that in a Cessna three ten. But it was an interesting experience. And uh, that's what I felt like I wanted to talk about tonight. So that was my story. And I think, I think that'll do it for now. But wait for more videos. There's more coming. There's more sitting up here that needs to get out. So until next time, yeah, please subscribe and click the bell. That would help us a lot. So until next time, be good to each other.